Today we'll talk about how to do the initial wash in watercolor. Sup, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. Today, using this painting that I did a while ago that some of you may remember, I want to talk to you a bit about the initial wash and how to do the initial wash in watercolor. This is, I think, um, it could be a very challenging part of the painting process depending on how you approach it, okay? Now, you do sometimes need to approach it the hard way and sometimes you can do the easier way and I'm going to talk a bit about this throughout the painting process, okay? Um, but with this one, it's a rather complex one and I want to show you how I approach this and how I do this. I think it's a really important skill to have, okay? Um, so what we're going to do now is start working on this one and I'll explain what I'm doing. I'll try and condense some of the video. I don't want, to, want it to be super duper long, uh, but hopefully it'll give you a good idea of how I do this. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm starting with uh, the drawing process. Uh, I wanted to give you a quick just view at how I approach this and what I put in because uh, it is pretty important for the initial wash to know what you even should draw in the first place. So you'll notice how the drawing is very uh, sparse in, det in details. Um, I already there recognized that this scene is going to be a bit of a challenge for me to paint. And the reason why is that the, the image itself, the photo uh, reference is very uh, significantly edited. Uh, it's been, I don't want to say tempered with because it's just color corrections and improvement, but the contrast and everything is has been played around with the saturation, uh, which makes it look unnatural in some senses. So uh, it is important to choose your reference well as well. Um, now, you don't want to use that as an excuse to not pay paint something as you see it, but some scenes are just better, uh, especially if you're a beginner, some scenes are just better to approach. So anyway, my plan was to create some depth in this scene uh, by drawing these two cabins, then another cabin at the back and another tree. Um, and this turned out to be quite a challenge. What you see now is about four times uh, the original speed. Uh, and again, we're running through the, blasting through the drawing stage uh, because I want to get to the painting stage. Now the painting stage of the initial wash, I'm going to do in real time. Okay, 100% real time so you can see everything I'm doing. So there we have this small uh, cabin or shack there, a little more in the distance. Um, there's a lot that goes into creating depth and this could be, if anything, a good example of how not to create depth. Um, so I will touch upon that as well. But for now, just um, what I'm doing now is just some lines that later on you'll, you'll understand why. So anyway, uh, I'm mixing this uh, mixture of uh, phthalo blue and some chromium yellow or um, cadmium yellow, something like a, a warmer yellow. Um, and I'm just starting the, the wash from top to bottom. Now, the main thing about the first wash is, for me at least, is that I want to get as much information in as possible because I know the more layers and the more washes I make, um, the more, the harder it, it's going to be to uh, blend things and to create the effects I want. Uh, and it is true because for example, blending and, and softening edges is easier when you have just the first layer of paint. Then the second layer you are blending to an existing layer. And if the paper is good, it's not going to lift it out, but it will not blend as well. It will not soften as well. And this is something that I don't see a lot of people talk about, but it is very important. So now I I try to vary the mixture a bit, or I don't, I don't even remember really, uh, but I should have varied it a little more. Now, as you can see, there's a bit of a foggy area at the top, um, which I'm just starting to get now uh, and I will use uh, a, a slightly wet brush just to um, again soften those edges and, and lead to that foggy feeling. Now a few things I would have done a little differently looking back is first I would have um, created much more interest in those. By the way I spritzed some, splashed some water on it so that the edges will stay alive. Uh, but anyway I would definitely create much more variance in the background, much more interest because now it's kind of a flat wash. 
Um, not a lot of things going on here. But in any case, uh, as an initial wash, you want to make sure that you are aware of all of the edges. So right now I have the edge at the bottom and I didn't use too wet of a wash, so it didn't bead. And now you see it started drying on me. So now I'm quickly bringing in more water because I want to make sure that the edge does bead. Uh, back when I did this painting, I didn't really... I think it's a good demonstration because it shows also what not to do. Um, I think I improved a little since then. Uh, honestly, it's like the things that you you learn when you're sure you know everything and then you always learn some lessons. It's crazy. Um, especially if you had a few paintings that went exactly the way you wanted and then you become just a little cocky and you, you get punched in the face, really, uh, by the medium. So now you see this part is still uh, wet because I uh, splashed some water on it with the atomizer so I can go back and add a bit more to it but I you know I didn't use too thick of a consistency but in any case uh, being aware of the edges is the most important thing uh, and I'm well aware of the bottom part and next time I will definitely um, add a bit more bead to it but the important part is gonna come in just a few moments sorry about the dog barking by the way um, the important part is gonna come in just a few moments uh, when I go below the level of the mountains in the distance which right now don't look like they don't appear like they're in the distance uh, because there's still no um, relatability there's nothing closer to push them back okay uh, but anyway, as the more I go down there, you'll, you'll realize how important it is to have everything uh, even and how it makes everything easier to understand, okay? So now I'm getting closer to the tree line that's uh, a little near the middle ground, I guess. Uh, so I darken things up just a little bit or add a bit of yellow to there, uh, going around that tree line, okay? And... And the most important thing is to not lose the edges and make everything look even. Um, it's very interesting, the approach to the initial wash, because some artists uh, really have this uh, desire to get as many details as possible there. And the painting, I wouldn't say it looks complete in the first wash, but it looks really well defined and really polished. And uh, I'm a little jealous of them, and it's something I'm working on developing. Uh, it's, it's very challenging for me to still to get uh, a lot of information in the first wash. A lot of this comes down to patience, uh, but some of it is not just patience, it's really skill and you have to practice um, painting, what I talked about a bit in the past, about painting in patches. Uh, so the more you paint in patches and, and in small parts each time, uh, the more you get used to it. And, and some people really disregard the edges and don't really care if they don't, if they dry on them. I don't know really, for me it's still hard. Uh, to figure that one out. But in any case, now you see, because I want to have the initial wash very even, I sacrifice accuracy and I go over some of the details. And it's not really a sacrifice, uh, because first off, it's rather easy to negative paint around such shapes. And secondly, when I put in the next washes, it will bring out the shapes of everything. So it's not really uh, a problem. Now you see another thing I'm doing is warming up the wash the more I go downwards. So um, I started putting some pure yellow, now I'm adding a bit of burnt sienna uh, or sepia, I don't even remember, I think it's burnt sienna. Um, and I'm just moving downwards with the wash, making sure that um, I do leave some highlights. And the highlights are just on, the, on those two cabins that are a little more in the foreground slash um, uh, midground. Uh, and so this is the only highlight that I really leave here. I don't think, <clears throat> and you will see in the final result, I don't necessarily think there's a good sense of light and shadow with this painting. Uh, I think there's a lot that could have been done better. Um, I would have already, sh I should have already painted the walls on the right. Here I go, finally. <laughs> um, but in any case, you'll see in a few moments, I don't think there's necessarily a good feeling of light and shadow here. Um, but it does give you an example of of a process, one process of many. And, and it's like you can't control it. Um, many times and I really it makes me think all the time like is saying you can't control it an excuse or is that like a valid point you know uh, and I'm really not sure about that still but anyway now I'm getting a little pure on the yellow I don't care if there's a few uh, different patches of the texture 
that are popping out the white of the paper. Um, I don't I don't mind that. Uh, it's even nice. It can be used to our advantage later on uh, to have some spontaneous highlights and things like this. Um, another thing I think could have been improved here is just the composition. It feels like it's a wide scene and there's not a, an awful lot of components in it. Uh, this could work to our advantage. Um, it really depends on what you want to achieve and your experience with achieving it. Because sometimes you you need to learn how to achieve a certain effect. And the only way to learn that is to make like 50 paintings that have that same effect. And to royally mess it up with 40 of them and to almost hit it with some of them. So yeah. Uh, now moving on to the second wash and with this part I'm running it at again uh, I think uh, four times the original speed uh, and here I'm putting a bit more details because it's a closer uh, area again not using wet enough of a wash uh, but in any case uh, I'm, I'm running through this process because again I wanted the focus of the video to be the initial wash but now you get to see some of the work on the on the rest of the stages and uh, I did want to show you how this one ends up okay um, so again trying to vary the the yellow to uh, blue one thing I would say uh, to improve upon that significantly is to leave some areas that are more pure yellow you can see a part that's almost purely yellow on the right but I would would have wanted to have some parts that are really pure yellow to really keep the purity um, and even a small area like that can really bring a painting to life uh, I don't remember exactly why I didn't do it if it was deliberate or uh, if it was by mistake or you know because I could have just um, thought to myself uh, that maybe it'll be too much details for the midground or you know there's a lot that goes into this now there's a sharp shadow under this bunch of trees on the mountainside um, so I can kind of end it there and then later on I'll put in some darker, uh, significantly darker areas there. So that's not a problem. So now I'm using some burnt sienna and it's a little muted by blue and by, by a bit of yellow. Um, just to create this, um, the structure of the fields there. Because there's a lot of fields there that are running across and there's, uh, there are areas that are a little more grassy and there's areas that are uh, a little more green, a little more yellow. So you just want to get some variance there. Um, so I really wonder about the sense of depth here. Uh, a few days ago I finished a painting and I didn't know what should be improved but I knew that it's not the result I wanted and whenever that happens I'm really happy because it, it usually means I'm gonna hit the next level. Uh, it's always like that. When I'm starting to have paintings that I don't know what I would have corrected uh, it's always like that and then a few months later maybe three or four or five months later I look back and I'm like oh I should have done this different this different this different um, so it's a, it's a good sign for me uh, so now we're getting some of the again larger shapes in some dry brush near near us just to create some texture uh, and later on you can uh, we can go in I should have probably left a bit more dry brush there uh, in any case, and then after we're finishing with the large shapes, we can zoom in on some of the uh, smaller ones like the, the two cabins or houses there, uh, the trees, the stronger shadows under them. Uh, and yeah, this is it. We're really near the uh, end of this process. So I think the, the most fun part is really when you, uh, you can start working on the small details. But in order to get there, you need to get your uh, large shapes in order. Uh, and you can't really skip that stage. It's really important to to do these properly. Uh, so now I thought I'd zoom in a bit so you can see some more of the details. I really like the tree in the uh, in the foreground. I think it turned out really well with the blue and the yellow. Uh, I created a good separation there and some cast shadows just to uh, to create a better sense of anchoring to the ground. Uh, foliage again is much darker, especially as it gets closer to you. So. Uh, these bushes next to the houses or, you know, uh, low-hanging um, trees and other foliage. It's really important to get these dark enough. Uh, some shadows under the roof. This will help us with creating an interesting contrast there. Um, and I'll probably add some details to the roofs themselves as well. Just some uh, red lines. Um, they're really important sometimes to get in the effect. And this is, I use kind of a blue-green-ish for the color for the shadows and mute it a bit with just a bit of brown uh, burnt sienna and yep this is really near the end uh, I just will add some details of the shingles you know uh, just to get that feeling of the steps of the roof uh, some texture that I didn't like so I'm kind of blending it out um, 
and a bit, a bit of a thicker shadow in the f- front of the houses. I think that was important as well. Um, and some details to the trees. And this one is almost done. Now I'm just going to sign it. And here's the final result uh, with the <laughs> palette I used. And now you'll see a more zoomed in better version of the painting. So I really hope you enjoyed this one. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Here is again the final result. Um, to tell you honestly, this isn't necessarily one of my favorite or my personal favorite paintings. I do think there's quite a lot of things I could have done better here. And um, especially when it's large masses of, of, um, of trees and, and a forest, uh, I think my way of uh, um, uh, abstracting what I see and maybe simplifying it a bit has improved, especially in a painting I recently shared on Instagram. Um, and so I do think it improved since then, so I don't really know how much I like this one. Uh, I do feel like it's lacking a bit, again, in sense of depth, uh, but I still think it's a, it's a decent one, it's a good one, and I'm happy to do it. I finished this one about um, almost two months ago, so I have improved since, and it's nice to see this with a new uh, perspective in mind and, and seeing what I could have done better, because sometimes I, I finish a painting and I don't know what could have been improved, but with this one I do. So anyway, this is it. I really want to thank you for watching, um, and I really hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I will put links to a lot of interesting things in the description box below, so you may want to check them out. Uh, I will put a link to my Patreon page, which if you want to support me, that's the best way, and you can also get a sneak peek into future videos and some more personal updates from me so I think it's a really cool one also I'll link to my podcast uh, to my Instagram account to everything everywhere you can, else you can find me and this is it thank you so much I will see you again in another vid really soon